Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. You are in for a treat. I know that what we're going to talk about has direct application in your life. We're going to talk about, you know, the, the series is, is crazily titled Hurt Attack. You know, it's, uh, we, know, we know heart attack, but what we're going to talk about is hurts. If you're a human being, you've been hurt. You've been hurt many times. How do you deal with hurt? How do you deal with your deepest pains? A lot of people get traumatized and they get stuck and they're not able to move forward and it affects their future. What we're going to do is we're going to give you tools in your hands so that you'll be able to deal with the hurts and the pains of your life and use them actually to energize and to bless the world. I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, and I want you to listen and open your heart and get ready for God's miracle today. Come on, everybody, put your hands together and give a shout of praise to Jesus! Yep! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Man, I love declaring those words that say, whatever comes my way, whatever I'm going through, whatever life is throwing in my face, whatever my situation is, I decide to come here today and rejoice in God and celebrate in God. That's right. Depression, whatever. Bankruptcy, whatever. Sickness, whatever. Eating disorders, whatever. Addiction, whatever. I came to announce today to somebody that if you have God in your life, you can get through whatever comes your way. That's right. Come on, give God some praise through all the whatever's in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I need you to do me a favor and do a little 360 degree turn where you are and shake the hands of all the people around you. Come on. Give them some love. This is family right here. Hello. Morning, guys. Wow. That's it right there. This is what we're all about. I want to see the hands of all our first timers here today. Can you lift up your hands? If this is your first time, hello, hello. Everybody say hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, welcome. You know what? Starting today, you're part of our family now, our spiritual family. And every Sunday, we have a reunion here in PICC. So make sure you come every week. Is that all right? We want to make this day extra special for you. So head down to the lobby after this session and we're going to give you a very special gift. We also want to say a special shout out to all the people who are tuned in online through our media partners. We thank you that you're, you're joining us wherever you are. God bless you. God be with you. How many people are happy to be here? Come on. Yeah. So excited. So excited. You know what? If this is your first time to be here, you couldn't have picked a better day to come than today because today we're officially starting a brand new series called Hurt Attack. Everybody say Hurt Attack. Just like Heart Attack. In this series, I believe that God is going to show you, He's going to reveal to you, and then He's going to teach you how to heal your deepest hurts. You want that? Tell the person beside you, God is going to heal you. And in the spirit of this new in the spirit of this new series, I wrote a poem. Is that okay if I tell you my poem? Are you sure? Parang hindi eh. My poem goes, the title is, Pain, Pain, Go Away. And it goes, Pain, Pain, Go Away. Don't come back. Don't come and stay. You've done enough. Now it's time to walk away. But if you should come back someday to come and steal my joy away, Good luck to you, this I say, for you will not see the light of day. Because guess what? Jesus is here to stay, so you better run away. Hallelujah. That's specially made just for you. Today is talk one. We're going to talk about history. History. Are you ready to feed in God's Word? Are you ready to study God's Word? You know, I used to hate that word study. I was so allergic to the word study. When I was in high school, whenever I hear the word study, I would break out in an allergy. 
I would always be in the school clinic during recess and most especially during math period. Is anybody like that here? Yeah, you can relate. But today, I'm telling you, school clinic is closed because I love studying, especially when it comes to the Word of God. So again, are you ready to study the Word of God? Everybody say, I'm ready. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Come on and stretch your hands out and say with me, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, lift your hands in honor of God's word and sing with me. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In this series, I claim and declare the promise of Jeremiah 37 where God says, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Again, tell the person beside you, God is going to restore you. I want to give a little background because what we want to do today is we want to take a walk around the life of two people, namely David and, can you guess the other guy? Good try, but no. David and Saul. How many people know who David is? How many people know who Saul is? You know, let me tell you this. It's not uncommon for people not to know who Saul is because after all, David was more popular. He was quite popular during his time and he was in fact regarded as one of the greatest leaders of Israel. And see, that was the problem because Saul wasn't popular. Saul was not famous like David, although he was the king before David. And that was the problem. See, my main lesson for you today, I want you to know that most of the hurts that you have in your life, sometimes they're self-inflicted. Sometimes they're self-inflicted. Let me give you a, a, a quick background. King Saul was king way before David was ever king. In fact, when David was still small, King Saul was already king. And he loved David at first. He loved David. But the problem was, as David grew up, resentment started. And you know, in life, sometimes it's more important that you finish strong even if you start weak. Tell the person beside you, finish strong. Because when Saul was king, he started pretty strong. He was a great king. He was a good king. But somewhere along the way, he got lost and he finished very weak. And that's our, our, our main lesson for today. In fact, the Bible says, here it is. The Bible says, let me read it to you. 1 Samuel 9 verse 2. It says that Saul was the most handsome man in Israel with head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. This guy had no reason to be insecure. He was the main man. He was, he was the guy, you know. He was numero uno, el presidente. But sadly, he was insecure. Man, this guy could represent Mr. Israel, Mr. Universe, session 1046 BC, man. This guy was handsome with a heart, confidently. But sadly, sadly, as we go along, you know what happened? I'll tell you, I read in the Bible. Something happened to Saul in the middle of all his, his experience with David. And I read to you from Samuel 18, 6 to 8. This is what happened. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, and with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. And as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Man, Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. Can you imagine what Saul, was, what Saul was going through? What? Is this a joke? Are they kidding me? I'm the king. I'm the guy. I just sent David to kill Goliath, but I'm really the king. And I'm, 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 I'm more handsome than David. Saul was thinking this way. And you see, if you break down what's happening, David wasn't hurting Saul. In fact, on the contrary, David was actually serving Paul, uh, Saul. You know who was hurting Saul? Saul. Saul was hurting Saul. Here's what it is. What was happening? 
pride was taking over. What is pride, friends? Pride, if you peel the outer layers of pride, little by little, at the very core of it, you'll find insecurity. In fact, most of the people that I know who are so proud, deep inside, they are insecure people. Tell the person beside you, don't be insecure. And pride is a killer. Let me tell you this, pride is a killer. Because pride will kill your joy. Pride will kill your peace. Pride will kill your marriage. Pride will kill your career. Man, pride is a killer. Can you tell the same person that you talk to and say, your pride is killing you. Don't do it. I want to leave you with one question. Are you listening? Just one question. Hopefully this question will echo throughout the week and you think about this after you leave the feast. Do you have any hurt in your life? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. But then I want you to ask the question, how much of that hurt that you're experiencing or that you experienced actually came from others? And how much of that pain and that hurt actually came from you? Think about it. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Can you bow down your heads? Put your hands over your chest. Let me pray for you. Father, we believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. Where you are, Lord, there is freedom. And in Jesus' name, I declare freedom over every difficulty, every mistake, every error, every hurt, every pain in the hearts of your people today. We believe that you have the power to set them free, to break the chains that bound these people. I hear, Lord, the sound of chains breaking loose. I hear the sound of freedom taking over the lives of your people today. So change us, affect us, and come us. We believe, Jesus. We believe. We believe in your power. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Come on and put your hands together. Give God a big hand, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. If there's a woman over there, just tell that person, hello, gorgeous. And if there's a guy beside you, just tell that guy, hello, guy. You know, I, I remember I, when my mom was still alive, I, I brought her to a little, you know, she had all these reunions with all her age, <laughs> um, w w women her age, and, and really the, all, all the aunties were there, and, and I would go visit that, and, and I would drive my mom, actually, and there was this one woman there, her name was Auntie something, um, uh, Auntie Betty, I, I just keep, keep mixing up those names, but, but she looked at me and she said, oh, Pogi, you know, and you, you know those... 70 plus year old women and they, they really they, they grab your cheek and all that and and and, and everybody was laughing all, all, all mom's amigas were laughing you know you know you're so handsome you know and, and I, I drove my mom after the, the whole meeting drove her back home and and I said I told her you know it's good to see Auntie Betty you know uh, for, yeah, I haven't seen her for a long time and and my mom said yeah it's true. It's so sad that she's become blind recently. <laughs> but she just said I was poogie. <laughs> and, and my mom said, no, she's blind. That's why we were all laughing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I, that has nothing to do with my message. I just, just remembered, you know. Can you tell somebody beside you again, gorgeous? gorgeous. I'm not blind. Welcome to our whole series on hurt attack. Everybody say hurt attack. We're going to talk all about hurts. How many of you have been hurt in the past before? Raise your hand if you've been hurt. Good. Good. Some of you really, you, re you raised your hand with emotion. <laughs> you know, you really raised it up. And, and I want you to know that hurts will continue. As long as you're alive and breathing. Can you inhale? Exhale. So that means you're going to keep on getting hurt. That, 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 that's, that is the fact of life. The only time hurt will stop, ask me when? Five minutes after you die. 
you know, I'm giving the five minutes allowance just in case you're dead and your brain is still twitching, you know. But, but that's the only time. So if you've been hurt in the past, how many of you have been hurt, even, even small hurts, in the past 48 hours, raise your hand. If you've been hurt in the past 48 hours, even just small hurts, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, good. That means you're still alive. Thanks be to God. You're alive. You're alive. Yay. Tell somebody beside you, congratulations, you're alive. Now, you can divide hurts like into three, you know. And, but, but before I talk about that, I, I just want you to know, and I'm going to repeat what Audie said a while ago. Most of the hurts, everybody say most. Most of the hurts that we complain about, dun, 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 self-inflicted hurts. Everybody say most. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Bo, that's impossible. Yep. Most of the hurts that you complain about, you did it to yourself. And I'm preaching to me. This is for everybody. I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to everybody here. Old, young, rich, poor. We do this to ourselves. We hurt ourselves. I want you to whisper to somebody beside you and say, you hurt yourself. You really do. We, we do this so often, we no longer understand that we're the ones doing it within someone. And I'm, my, here's my one big message. Ask me what? I want you to start setting yourself up to be happy. Because the thing is, what happens usually is that we set ourselves up for hurt. That, that, that's what we do. But I want you to reverse that. And I want you to make a decision today that starting right now, this moment, Set yourself up to be happy. Touch somebody beside you and just tell that person, set yourself up to be happy. I kind of like divided all the hurts that we experience into three. The first one is serious hurt. Everybody say serious. These are the big hurts. You know, big hurts. Some, some, some people go through big hurts. Their parents abandon them. You know, their, their stepdad beats them up. Uh, their spouse commits adultery. Uh, their business partner swindles them, steals away the business from them. You know, there, there is evil in this world. You know, an uncle molests you, abuses you. There, there, there is evil in this world. Let's accept that. Life is unfair. Some people complain to me, you know, when they go through sharing their problems and, and they share their serious hurts. They say, life is unfair, Bo. And then they want me to argue with them and, and tell them, no, it's not. And I say, no, I agree with them. Yeah, li life is unfair. It's true. For some of you who've gone through serious hurts, life is unfair and there's no explanation. I will not explain it away. There, there are people, they're doing good in life and then all of a sudden somebody hurts them really, really bad. Let's accept that. But even if life is unfair, I need to proclaim this to you. God is still good. Life may be unfair, but God is still good. And He will right those wrongs. And a day will come, you will receive your reward. Maybe in this life, maybe in the next life, but God's going to write it for you. And hold on to that and trust in that. And then there's what you call, uh, oh, by the way, why, why are there bad people that hurt a lot of people? Why are there Hitlers in this world? Why? Why are there big Hitlers and why are there small Hitlers who hurt? Ask me why. Because hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. That's why. And I believe the, the evilest person in the world was once upon a time an innocent child that was not loved. And when a child is not loved, that is the breeding ground, that can be the breeding ground of evil. And I pray that some people would come and reparent that child.
I know what you're hearing now is tough. It's like tough love, you know. It's like um, it's so easy to, to blame other people and say, you know, he hurt me, he hurt me. But what's your part in the equation? Sure, they hurt you. But how do you magnify that hurt? That's what we're asking today. Here's number two. The first is serious hurts. And then the second hurt, kind of hurt is what I call small hurts. Everybody say small. And, and we, we, we grow th through this where people hurt us in a small way and they don't do it out of malice. People who hurt us in small ways, they do it not because they're evil. People do it because they're people. <laughs> they're people. Am I making sense to you? Married people, raise your hand. We do this all the time to one another as couples. When your husband forgets your anniversary, that's the unforgivable crime. Yes, ladies? It is so unforgivable. Yet, here's my question to you. Did your husband do it because he's evil? You want to believe that, but no. Your husband did it because he's human. Because he's a guy. I'm not, I'm not because I'm a guy, I'm justifying him, but, but guys do that. They can be so focused on something and they forget. And I know all the women say, Woo! <laughs> but, 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 but it's true, I'm, I experienced that. All the guys here in the house who once upon a time forgot a very important event in your wife's life. Raise your hand. You better go to confession, you know that? <laughs> I do that many times. I am so focused in my job, so focused in my work. When I go home, my wife is pouting. And, and she says, do you remember anything? And all of a sudden, I'm panicking. Well, what did I forget? What did I forget? What did I forget? <laughs> what did I forget? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I said, the birthday? No, it's not birthday. Anniversary? No, it's birthday. And it's not because I'm evil. But I hurt her. I hurt her. No intention, no malice. How many of you, we, we experience small hurts, yes or no? And, and, and the thing about small hurts is that they, they happen. And we can either say, by the way, that's the reason why I married my wife on my birthday. <laughs> and I want you to know that for the past 18 years, I've never forgotten. So to all the single people out there, all the single guys out there, when, when your fiancé starts asking you when, do you, when, when will the wedding be? You say, my birthday. <laughs> You'll never forget it. Never. There's a third kind of hurt. It's called, what's the first one? Serious. What's the second one? The small ones. You know, and the small ones, you should have the ability, everybody say, ability, to brush off that small hurt. Because it was done not out of, make sense? Not, not because they're evil, they're bad, or out of malice. No, it was done because you know, people fail. Brush it off. Move on. Move on. Everybody say, move on. But you see, what happens is they go to number three, ask you, what's number three? Self hurts. It's when you hurt yourself. This is crazy and there are two kinds of, of, of self-inflicted hurts. How many kinds? The first one is when you repeat your mistakes. You hurt yourself by making the same mistake over and over again. Now listen to me, mistakes are normal. Everybody say mistakes are normal. In fact, the only way to progress is to make mistakes. But this is the problem. There's a difference between winners and losers. Ask me, what's the difference? Winners, they make brand new mistakes every day. That's why they're winners. Losers, they make this exact same mistake over and over and over again. Am I, am I speaking to somebody here? Can I tell you a story? There were two friends who met. And one of them had both ears bandaged. And the other friend said, what happened to you? 
look, look at you. And, and the other guy said, well, this is so embarrassing, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. This morning, I was, I was ironing, and the cell phone was beside me. <laughs> and my, my wife rang. My wife called up, and I, I, put, the, <laughs> I put the iron on my ear. It's so embarrassing to tell that to you. And the other friend said, oh, gosh, you're nuts. But wait a minute. What about the other ear? And he said, um, my wife called again. <laughs> you know, we, we, we hurt ourselves needlessly, uselessly, if you repeat the same absolutely crazy mistake again and again and again and again and again. Example, I have met women who only accept jerks for their boyfriends. I was talking to one of them. I told her, you know what? Don't you see? Can you open your eyes that your boyfriend number two is exactly the same as boyfriend number one? Both of them are jerks. Can't you see it? They're exactly the same. Copy paste. <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, I would, I would tell them, it's carbon copy. Except that teenagers would say, what's that? Okay, so I now use copy-paste. And, and she was trying to do, she was in denial. She said, no, brother Bo, they're different. They're, okay, 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 maybe they're, they're, they're different. Maybe, maybe. Boyfriend number one was irresponsible and unfaithful. Boyfriend number two was unfaithful and irresponsible. <laughs> Now do, you now, do you know why that happens? Ask me why. Why do we tend to gravitate towards, you know, people who would hurt us and we would do it over and over and over again? Ask me why. Because people do not get what they deserve. People get what they think they deserve. Now that's big. You should, you should take a picture of that. You, you should write it down. You, that is the reason why we hurt ourselves many, many times. We do not get what we deserve. We get what we think we deserve. So if you think you're garbage, and a lot of people think they're garbage, they will accept garbage into their life. Are you with me on that? But if you think you're gold, hallelujah, if you believe you're gold, you will accept gold only. And if there's a single person beside you, just tell that person, you're gold. You should accept only gold. And, and could you put your hands over your chest with me? I, I, want, I want us just to say this together. Remove, remove that garbage mentality in your mind. You're not garbage. You are gold. Everybody say, I'm blessed. Abundant. I attract blessings. Abundant blessings are spontaneously flowing into my life every day. Amen. I, I want you to believe in that. I, I really do. You see, when you blame other people, what happens is you lose your power to change your life. And so what we're doing now is we're recapturing that power by stopping blame and by saying, what's my role here? What can I do here to move forward, to move on? Oh, I remember I was talking to another guy. Um, he, he had debts, lots and lots of debts. And by the miracle of God, you know, his relatives and his family, they helped him out and he got out of debt. And, you know, w while he had debt, he was just crying and was saying, Oh, Brother Bo, you know, I just, I just, I'm asking God for a miracle. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm creditors are calling me left and right. I can't sleep, blah, 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 blah. Relatives, family members came, rescued him. He was so happy. Do you know what happened the following year? Just about 12, 12 months later. Ask me what? His debt was 10 times the original debt. He became, he was in debt. He became free. He got into debt again. Why? Because he thought he did not deserve freedom. In his mind, he looked at himself as someone who was always a slave. And, and that's, that's the thing. 
we hurt ourselves by repeating our mistakes. Are you listening to me? Can I move, move to the second type of self-inflicted hurt? The second type of self-inflicted hurt is when we replay our hurts. Can everybody say, when we replay our hurts? I was, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking, it's, I had a classmate when I was in grade school. I had a classmate, his name was, we called him Gali because, because he had a lot of galis. <laughs> Kids can be very mean, right? So, so we called him Gali and Gali, you know, he had wounds all over, like, like terrible scabs and wounds and scars, it's just all over his body. I found out why. We were in the cafeteria one time, we were talking, and then I saw him with my two eyes. As he was talking, we, he was telling a story, I was telling a story, and as he was, we were doing that in conversation, I saw his fingers going into his wounds, and he was poking and digging and scratching, and, and it was awful. And I said, stop that! And then he said, stop what? That! What? You know, he did not know that he was doing it, that he was re-wounding himself. And that's what happens with us when we've been hurt last year, last month, 10 years ago, and we replay it in our mind, and we rewind it, and we watch it in vivid color, in our imagination, and we never let go. Now listen to me, you've got to acknowledge it. Yes, you've got to say, that person hurt me. You've, you've got to admit it, you don't deny it. But after admitting and acknowledging, do not replay the hurts in your mind, because every time you replay it, what's happening? You're like galley. You're digging into your wound. You're scratching again and again. It hurts deeper and deeper. And you'll never let go. You'll never be able to move on. Are you listening to me? Can I give you another more graphic analogy? Here it is. No, no. Yes. No, 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 please. Help! Help! Somebody help! What happened? I was, I was stabbed. I speak our knife. It's a knife. Stainless steel, four inches long. Made in China. Oh, I see. <laughs> I heard somebody shout. What happened? I was, I was falling right here when, I, when Al Dabra came. And he got my phone, he got my wallet, and he, he, he got this. A knife. And without a warning, he stabbed me. Now, now, you might say, Bo, that's comical. I mean, that's absolutely nuts. You, you, you don't do that. Well, we do. We actually do. Tell somebody beside you. Do you do that? We replay it in our minds. We never let go. The hurt happened last, you know, two months ago, five months ago, five years ago. But it's so fresh in our minds. I want you to hold someone's hand, please, again. This is big. T t t tell somebody beside you, hold, hold, hold that hand really, really tight, and then look that person in the eye and say, let go. <laughs> tell that person beside you, move on. <laughs> now, I... Now, now the thing is, here, the thing is, there are people. You know that there are, who are the collectors here? My, my, my wife is a collector. She, she likes collecting twin star, 
you know, stuff. How many of you are stamp collectors? Are they still alive? Stamp. <laughs> there are stamps. See, there are, there are. Toy collectors. Are there toy collectors? Doll collectors. You know, all these, collect these collections are okay. They're okay. But there are also hurt collectors. There are hurt collectors. They collect their hurts. They arrange them and display them in a shelf, <laughs> in the shelf of their imagination. And then they, oh, I got hurt again. Oh, I got hurt again. How will I get hurt? How, how else will I get hurt? And, and you know, they, they, there, there are people like that. They collect their hurt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the, the gang to come back on stage and show that to you. They come from the hospital already. Yes, sir. Doc, I'm going to go into you. Wait, wait, wait. Hey. No, 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 no. No, 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 don't stab me, don't what? stab me! What? Don't why, stab me! Why do you say that? She, she looks like my whole daughter! What? Ah! 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 No! No! I'd like the gang here to, to give a big bow. Come on, everybody, just say... Give them a big hand. Thank you, guys. Remove your masks. The, 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 the message is this. Sometimes the one who hurt you two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, what you do is you project his face on the people that you meet. Are you listening to me? And, and what happens is that person is not hurting you, but you project. And, and you imagine that that person is hurting you. Can I give you one last example? Maybe two more. I, I was, I was, this, this happened like centuries ago. Like, like I was, I was, the, the light of Jesus was still very tiny, about 300 people. And, and when I went inside a prayer meeting, there was this woman who just crossed my path. And then the first thing she told me, Brother Bo, why don't you love me? <laughs> and it, it got like, oh, why? And then she said, for four prayer meetings already, you have not greeted me and I said oh it, it was not intentional I, I I didn't see you you see everyone else you see me you don't see I'm invinci I'm invisible to you wow you know it, it's really the, the thing that that came to me was that there are 300 people in the prayer meeting I won't be able to greet everybody. But, but that's the point. There are people, and I, I knew this woman, and the hurts that she went through in the past, and what happens is that she had a problem with her father, and, and so I, she, saw my, she saw me, her father, in me. May, are, are you listening to the connection? And, and that she was projecting that I also did not. To, to her father, she was invis, in, invisible. Make sense? Her father did not see her, did not see her value, did not see her importance. And now she was looking at me and saying, same thing. Was I hurting her? No, she was hurting herself. There was this other person I, I know on her birthday. She would, she would grab her phone and almost the whole day she will hold her phone on her birthday, waiting for this person and that person to greet her. And if that person did not greet her, but I, what, what do you call that? You know, that's, that's what you call setting up yourself for hurt. Make sense? There was this other woman who, who had a, that difficulty. And, and I remember she asked for a meeting this was, this was like 20 years ago, okay? 20 years ago. Was, but I still remember um, that we, we, had, we had, I remember, I still remember what we ate, you know? Hot chocolate and ensaymada. But I could not taste the ensaymada. Because for one hour and a half, this woman, she told me all her woes. She said, 
when I had a baby and if my baby was sick, you did not call me up. You know, when people were criticizing me and gossiping about me, you did not defend me. You know, on and on and on, one hour and a half. And all I could say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could not taste my enzymada, you know, the whole time. And the, the, thing, the thing was, I realized something. She set up herself for hurt. Ask me why. Her expectation on me was so high. Actually, for all her friends. She, had, she never had close friends because she, she would end up having conflicts with them. Why? Expectations were so high. At a certain point, she'll get hurt. Make sense? My dear friends, set up your life for happiness. Set up yourself not to get hurt, but to be happy. Ask me how. Let's all stand. This is how. This is how. I know of another guy. When it's his birthday, he also grabs his phone. But you know what he does? He calls up everyone he knows. He calls me up. Bo, it's my birthday. Ako naman, happy birthday, bro. And he tells me, Uy, thank you, how you remind, you remembered. <laughs> Galena, no? Galena. What was he doing? He knew that his friends will forget. Why? Not because they're bad. Because they're forgetful and because they're busy. Make sense? So call them. Don't set up yourself for hurt. Set up yourself for happiness. And what we're going to do now is, I'm, we're, you know, we're talking about diagnosis, we're talking about history. I want, I want you to look at the history of your hurts and I want you to place them in the hands of God because this is what God will do. God will rewrite your history. Because 1 Corinthians, I'm going to read you that passage before we pray. One, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone. The new has come. I want you to lift up your hands and everybody say, Jesus, rewrite my history. I surrender all my hurts. I want to move on. I want to thank you that because of you in my life, because of your love in my heart, I can surrender all my hurts and move on. In Jesus' name, amen.
lift your name up, Lord. We lift your name up. We lift your name. You are higher. There's no one like you, Jesus. We lift your name up. We lift your name. You are Father in heaven, I give my life to you. You love me. And I'm your child. And so I thank you that blessings are flowing into my life. Abundance is flowing into my life. Miracles are flowing into my life. And I'm truly grateful and I declare my dreams will come true. Amen. And this will be my song. And this will be my song. My chains of broken. I am free. And this will be my story. And this will be my song. I'll praise you, my Savior. Just tell that person, set up yourself to be happy. You deserve to be happy because you are God's child. Tell that person, move on. Tell that person beside you, let go. I want you to know that you are the foundation. You are the base for Kerygma TV. 
I mean, think about it. Number one, you're there. You're watching every week. Thank you so much. Number two, you're praying for us. Thank you. And thank you for being my mission partner. Because this, this, this entails cost. Like airtime is incredibly expensive. But because you're there, we say thank you. Listen, for any amount whatsoever that you want to donate so that this ministry and this word will continue to touch the lives of people, whatever amount, I'm going to send this to you. This is what you just heard, talk one of our series, Hurt Attack. Ship it to your home just to say thank you. For, for a gift of 2,000 pesos or, or more, I'm not gi- going to give you only one. I'm going to give you all the talks of our series, Hurt Attack plus a book that has helped countless of people already. I wrote the book, Your Past Does Not Define Your Future. It is a powerful, powerful book that has healed a lot of people in their, in their hurts and in their pains, in their traumas. I, I share it very deeply here. I, I wanna ship this to your home now. All the talks plus the book uh, for, for a gift of 2,000 pesos or more to the ministry. Once again, thank you so much. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.